It may have been a few months or years since you've had your basic research class. You know, the one where you learned about types of knowledge about behavior, types of research hypotheses, etc. This video is meant to jog your memory about these concepts so you can hit the ground running in your quest to develop and implement a research project. We will focus exclusively on three different types of knowledge. An understanding of this concept should help you write better research questions and hypotheses, which is key to conducting good research. You'll likely recall that there are three types of knowledge about behavior, descriptive, predictive, and causal or understanding. When you want to describe behaviors by defining, classifying, or measuring them, you are interested in descriptive knowledge. For example, you want to know or want to describe the demographics of people who visit Disneyland, or what rides they find appealing, or the reasons they desire to visit the happiest place on Earth. Although descriptive knowledge may be easier than the other two types of knowledge, it's not always as simple as it sounds, as you may have to really examine the behaviors to make sure you're not confusing those that are similar but different. For example, people say they go to Disneyland to have fun, but are they going for social reasons or to escape from everyday life? Predictive knowledge is similar to playing the odds. If I know you have small children at home, I can predict that you are likely to vacation at least once in Disneyland. It makes sense to me, but first I need to confirm that such a pattern exists, that there is a relationship between the presence of small children at home and the likelihood of visiting Disneyland. Now having young children does not cause you to visit Disneyland, but if there is indeed such a correlation, I can make a prediction based upon that relationship. But I wonder, what does cause people to visit Disneyland? Really, establishing causation is dramatically different than knowing that a correlation exists between two variables. But if I get a really good handle on it, and I'm in Disney's marketing department, then that would make me a very hot commodity indeed. For example, does fabulous weather cause people to visit Disneyland in greater numbers? If so, if I can figure out how to influence the weather, I could influence attendance. Or if I could affect the economy, would that cause an increase in spending at the park? And marketers always want to establish a causal link between their advertising campaign and increased attendance. Let's move away from the Disneyland example and take another look at descriptive knowledge, where some claim is where all knowledge starts. Remember that descriptive knowledge is describing behaviors by defining, classifying, and or measuring them, often requiring discriminating between similar behaviors. So let's use social anxiety as an example, a condition that, according to the Anxiety and Depression Association of America, affects about 7% of the population. This is an example of descriptive knowledge. We can quantitatively describe a behavior. But remember that we may need to delve deeper to discriminate between similar behaviors. You notice, for example, that many people report that they are anxious when they are at a social gathering, and some people report being anxious when they have to speak in front of a group. Well, then, maybe the behavior is not just socially anxious. You can then hypothesize that there are at least two different types of social anxiety, social behavior anxiety, or anxiety related to merely being at a social gathering, and public speaking anxiety, anxiety specifically related to speaking in front of groups of people. You can now test this attributive research hypothesis by designing measures that you could administer via questionnaires or interviews that provide scores for each type of social anxiety, and then demonstrate that the two can be differentiated. For example, that there are folks with one, the other, both, or with neither type of anxiety. In fact, if you've studied James McCroskey's research on communication apprehension, you'll know that there are probably much more than just two different types of social anxiety. Let's turn next to predictive knowledge, where knowing the amount or kind of one behavior might allow us to predict the amount or kind of another behavior. In this case, this example, we want to know if there is a correlation or a relationship between how many practice problems a student completes and that student's grade on an exam. This would be very nice to know, but first we need to establish that there is indeed a pattern or a relationship between the two variables. So we record the number of practice problems and that student's exam score, and we find this. Well, this looks like we can predict how well a student did on the test based upon how many practice problems the student completed before the test. Now, while the prediction isn't perfect, it might give us some useful information. 
Let's turn next to causal understanding, where we are looking at cause and effect. This is taking prediction to the next level. In the previous example, even if exam scores are associated with number of practice problems completed, I really can't jump to the conclusion that increasing the number of practice problems would cause an improvement in grades. And why not? Well, what if those students who already do well on exams are dedicated enough to do all the practice problems? They may have done well on the test, even if they hadn't done all the homework. Recall that causal knowledge is understanding which behaviors have a causal relationship so that you can manipulate the cause to produce a change. Remember, the cause must come before the effect. Look at these examples, assuming that you've already established a relationship between two variables. Now we've talked about this first one, percentage on the exam, and the number of practice problems. The assumption is that the number of practice problems completed occurred before the test score. So the number of practice problems might be the cause affecting the resulting test score. How about the amount of therapy a patient may have and the change in depression levels? You've got it. The amount of therapy would be the cause that would result in a change in depression. And a final one, a student score on the quantitative section of the GRE, the graduate record exam, and the number of math classes a student has taken. The number of math classes could be the cause that could affect the GRE quantitative score. And remember that just because two behaviors are related doesn't mean that they are causally related. Perhaps an alternative cause may exist. A change in a person's life situation may cause a change in depression and not the amount of therapy received. Just a quick test to see if you can correctly identify the types of knowledge using the homework and exam score example. I want to know if I can anticipate student score on the first exam from performance on their homework assignments. Would that be descriptive? predictive, or causal. I want to construct a score that indicates how well each student prepared for exam one. What type of knowledge would that be? And I want to know whether I can improve your scores on exam one by increasing the number of homework assignments I give you. What do you think here? Well, how did you do? I don't know if I can emphasize this enough, but be careful of confusing association or correlation with causality. There's a wonderful Pickles comic by Brian Crane, which I can't show you for copyright reasons. A grandfather is eating breakfast, and his grandson asks curiously, What's that stuff, Grandpa? His grandfather answers, Shredded wheat. You want some? His grandson replies, Won't it make me old? Just because two behaviors are related doesn't mean that either one is the cause of the other. Another example is that height and weight are strongly related in adults. People who are taller tend to carry more weight than people who are short. I'm short, and like many short people, really wish I were taller. So should you advise me to gain weight in order to increase my height? Perhaps the most famous example is the relationship between violent crime and ice cream sales, documented multiple times. As ice cream sales increase, so does the number of violent crimes, including homicide. So does eating ice cream make you more violent? meaning that ice cream is the cause and violence is the effect? Or perhaps after you are violent, you crave ice cream. Violence causes the increase in ice cream sales. The most obvious explanation is that the two behaviors, while they are associated with each other, are potentially caused by an increase in temperature. When it's hot outside, tempers may fly and ice cream sales may skyrocket. Expand this logic to other areas, determining if a relationship exists that would allow you to make predictions, or if you can really establish a cause and effect relationship. If you think there is a causal relationship, which variable might be the cause and which might be the effect? Processing time, what are the three different types of knowledge? Which of the three types of knowledge do you think would be the easiest to research? I would think descriptive which is often only interested in knowing about one variable, such as how many students have watched this video, or what are the demographics of the students who have watched this video. What type of knowledge would you be after if you wanted to hypothesize that a change in one variable would result in a change in another variable? Say, requiring students to watch this video would result in better grades on an exam. Now that would be causal understanding, because we would be looking for a cause and effect relationship. 
However, I can't prove cause and effect in this case unless I control for lots of other variables, such as type of student, type of academic preparation, study habits, etc. Therefore, I really can't know it as causal understanding. But if I know such a relationship exists, that watching this video and success on an exam are associated or correlated with each other, then I can predict that now that you've watched this video, you are likely to do well on the exam and hopefully in the class.